because of his word is in the master's hand. God's gonna make a miracle when my life feels bad and it is. going to make a miracle. He will redeem our soul. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. singing in the background. God's gonna make a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power's in his hands. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. Uh, this is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day. We praise you this day for just being God and being God all by yourself. You're an awesome, wonderful, and marvelous God, and we just thank you. We ask you now, dear Heavenly Father, as we get ready to study your word in Sunday school, that you open up our minds, that we might hear your word. And then, Lord, not only let us hear your word, but help us to be doers of your word. We pray to Heavenly Father that you anoint afresh this, this technology, Lord. We plead your blood over it. You told us where two or three are gathered in your name that you're in the midst. So, Lord, have your way. Make everything according to your will and your way. We thank you for this. Bless. 
each individual on this call and each individual live on Facebook. Bless and plead, we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over their situations and their circumstances. We plead the blood of Jesus over their communities, countries, states, or whatever they at, Lord. We plead your blood. And we ask you, Lord, to just have your way. Have your way, Lord. Work a miracle in each of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our lesson today comes from 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. It's all the way at the back of the Bible. You turn all the way to the back, go to Revelations, and then you come back and you'll find John, John, 1 John, 1 John. It's an epistle, not the Gospel of John, same writer, but the 1 John, 1 John. And we're going to be looking at verses, or chapter 4, verses 17 through 19, 17 through 19. That's what we're going to be looking at this morning, and we're going to really dig into these uh, to these uh, scriptures. Uh, the title uh, for today's lesson could be Perfect Love. Uh, it can be God is love. Um, and um, then the one I, one of the ones I like is to love and to be loved, to love and to be loved. So this is a nice, nice, beautiful lesson this morning. So our key verse, our key verse comes from uh, verse 16, and I'm reading this out of a New King James Version of the Bible. It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, and we know. And we have known, excuse me, and we have known and believe the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwells in God, and God in him. Amen, amen. And this, 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 this passage of scripture, this key passage of scripture tells us that God is love, and as a believer, we should know that about God, that we should know and trust that God, that God loves us, and, 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 and we, and we uh, should, should be able to tell others about our loving and wonderful God. If we if we love God, we will obey His word. We we can also trust that God will also and always love us, and that we live and will live in us. So so that's a marvelous thing to understand about God's love. One of the biggest problems we have in this world is that we really don't know what love is. And, and this passage of scripture simply says it in a direct fashion. God is love. And when we see that and when we hear that, people say, yeah, okay, God is love. God is love. But, but, but they don't have an understanding of what love is. They don't comprehend what love is. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and so for us to understand what love is, we could go over into the, the, the first Corinthians chapter uh, uh, um, uh, 13 uh, chapter, first Corinthians chapter 13, and we could see some things over there talking about what kind what God is or what love is, I swear, uh, is, a, is a way of saying it. Uh, and, and, and what we see is that, that, that it's a situation that this love, that is expressed in, in that in that passage of scripture tells us something about what love is and what God's character of love is. And so love is patient and it is kind. Love rejoices in truth. Love bears, believes, and hopes and endures all things. That's what love is. And then, then to understand completely what love is, you have to also understand what love is not. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 gives us that too. It says love is not envious or boastful. It's not arrogant or rude. Love, it doesn't insist on its own ways. It's not irritable. It's not resentful. And it, re and it doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing. So those are the things love is not. And these things tell us about the characteristics of God. 
And it tells us about the characteristics of, of, of love. God is love. Love is God. Either way you put it, God equals love. Love equals God. But here you have to understand something that 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 love can't just be a bunch of words. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you. No, 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 no. Love it, 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 it just ain't a bunch of talking. And God did not try to talk us into loving him. God did not just keep talking, talking about, I love you, I love you. God demonstrated his love for us. And we're going to see this in this text, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly, it says over in, in Romans chapter chapter 5. So, 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 so that's what we're going to be dealing with today. We're going to be dealing with this love. This love that ain't just a word. This love that just ain't something you just talk about. It, it's, it's a love that, that has action behind it. It's demonstrated. And God is love. And so the key concept is simple. God is love and he loves us. My keys for kids this morning is that love comes from God. God showed his love by sending his son. To die for us. And God wants us. To love him. And to love others. Those, those are the things we have to do. This is the keys for kids. If, the, if you don't get nothing else out of this message. Listen to it again. Number one. Love comes from God. Number two. God shows his love by sending his son. To die for us. Number three. God wants us to, wants us to love him. And to love others. That's my keys for kids. Simple, simple, simple lesson. But now for y'all deep theologians, we're going to get down into the, to, to the good stuff. So the learning facts that we're going to deal with in this time period that we have is to explain our relationship with our loving God. Oh, yeah. I, I could just sit right there for a minute because we have a relationship. What a loving God. That's, that's what this whole thing about. Being saved by grace is, is saved into a relationship. We've been adopted into, into the family of God. We've been adopted to sons and adopted as daughters. And, and we have a relationship with God where we can call him our father. And the biblical principle that we're gonna jump out that we're gonna jump into in this lesson is to reflect on how God's perfect love. Cast out fear in all humans. And we'll come back to that in a minute. And then the daily application that we want you to take home with this is to, to make a plan to participate in, 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 in ministry of the church and to show God's love tangibly. Find some tangible way to show God's love. Two two points two points and I you know I'm, I just had to give two at least two points. Uh, uh, we're gonna look at the source of love, and we're gonna look at the result of love. The source of love, and we're gonna look at the results of love. Hallelujah! And so I, I went out and I, I I was talking to the wife last night before we went to bed, and I you know I talked about First Corinthians already, but I said, "Baby, you you gonna teach Sunday school today?" She said, "No, I'm not teaching it, but I gotta." I got a, uh, 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 I'm going to be in the class. And I said, well, did your lesson have a nice, simple definition for love? Uh, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, let's send it to me. And this is what it says. What is love? Love is an action or a choice to put others first and think of others instead of ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. That's a great definition of love. love. Love is, love is an action. Love is a choice to put others first and think of ourselves instead, or think of others, excuse me, instead of ourselves. That's, that's what love is. But let's, let's now, let's get down into the text. Let's get into the text starting at verse 7 of uh, 1 John 
chapter 4, starting at verse 7, and we're going to read all the way down to verse 12. I'm reading it out of a, uh, see, let's see, where are we going? We're going to go with a New King James Version of the Bible. Here we go, here we go. Beloved, beloved, let us, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who love, loves is born of God and, and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us. That, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live uh, through him. And this is love. Not, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation uh, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. No one, no one, no one, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God loves us and his love has been perfected in us. This, this tells us that, that God is the source. God is the source of our love. Love originated. Love comes from. Love is, is God. That, that's where it comes from. It's, it's, God is the source of love. And as I said earlier, love is 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 is, is demonstrated. He, he he don't just talk about it. He he shows his love. In the in the sense that he gave his only begotten son. Love gives extravagantly. He didn't just give a small token. He gave his only begotten son. That's love. So when we hear John 3, 16, when we hear that verse and says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We understand that, that God loves us and he didn't just talk it. He demonstrated his love by giving us his only begotten son. Love comes from God. And he showed us his love. He demonstrated his love by sending his only begotten son. And what he wants us to do is understand that if I sent my only begotten son to love you, to die for your sins, all I ask in return from you it's to love one another. That's all he wants. It's for us to receive that love that he gave us. And then go and give that love out to somebody else. Oh, hallelujah. I, I remember this, this, this passage of scripture was, was my second sermon that I ever preached. And I preached it at East St. Louis Christian Center. Um, at that time, uh, Pastor Helen Price, my older sister, was pastoring my, and I think my mom was was uh, assistant pastor, pastor mom, and 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 I preached God is love. That was my second sermon. My my first sermon, my first sermon I ever preached back in 1990 was was. Uh, inquiry minds want to know. I preached from John 3.16. 
and I talked about Nicodemus and, and, and his visit to, to Jesus. And choiry minds want to know. And then the second sermon I ever preached was God is love. And I think about that because that's what I felt when I first accepted my calling into to ministry. I felt God's love. How could he, he, he save a wretch like me? How could he accept a wretch like me? How could he call me? Yeah, I got, gave my life when I was in the, in, in, in uh, 12 years old in the fifth or sixth grade. And, and I, and I confessed him as my Lord and savior. And I was burning hot fire for about two or three days after I got baptized. I want everybody to get, then after that, I turned into a hellion. Didn't do right, lied, cheated, steal, whatever I wanted to do. And yet, 28, 29 years old, God still said, I called you to preach. My son died for your sins. Your sins don't mean nothing to me. It's already covered in the blood. Now do what I ask you to do. Love me. With all your heart and your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. And don't just say it. Demonstrate it. By accepting my calling. And preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever you go. Not just in words. But live it. Oh hallelujah. Demonstrate it. Walk it and talk. And so he says something in verse 12 that, 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 that many times throw a lot of people out. Listen to verse 12 from, from, from a New Living Translation. I want you to hear verse 12. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. Now, now that's, 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 that's how the New Living Translation reads it. Now listen to it from the, from, from the King James Version, New King James. No one has seen God at any time. And if we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. People have a problem with that word perfected. But I like how the New Living Translation says it is brought to his Full expression in us. It grows. It's, 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 it, 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 is, it is matured. Because that's what love is supposed to do. Yeah, I mean, when I, I've been married now for, for, oh, okay, hold on, help me, Jesus. 32 years, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and, and, and yes, I, was, I fell in love with her in, in, in 19... 79. I, I, I pursued her up until 1982. I, I fell head over heels in love with her during that time. But, but then, then now we got married in 84 and now it's 2017. And guess what? I love her even more. Because that's what love does. It, love grows. Love gets better and better and better over time. Remember what I said over in 1 Corinthians earlier. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endures all things. So your love just gets stronger and stronger and comes into a full expression. Oh, hallelujah. That's, that's where God wants us to be. He is our source and he's going to love us forever and ever and ever. And he wants us to grow in that kind of love for one another. Oh, hallelujah. Our second point, our second point, and, 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 and he says, wait a minute, don't go, don't go too fast, son. Don't go too fast. He says, hold on. You got to know God. He said, don't, don't pass that one up. You got to know God. And, and that's, that's part of this. You got to know God. K-N-O-W. You got to know him. And that word know in the Greek is uh, 
uh, uh, Konoski, I think I'm saying it right. That that means that means that means something intimate, you know, like Abraham. I mean, like a Adam knew Eve, and Abraham knew Sarah. It's a it's an intertwined relationship. You got to know him. You got to know him. That's 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 what you got to do. You got to know him. Intimate with him. That's what this relationship is all about. And then when you know him, you got to give your love to him. Give your love to yourself and give your love to others. That's what love is all about. And somebody just hit me. No greater love. Than for a man to lay down his life for a friend. Oh God, Jesus demonstrated his love by laying down his life for, for you and for me and for this whole entire world. He, he laid down his life for us. And no greater love is to lay down your life. That's to really know somebody. He did it for you and he did it for me. And we might be part of the beloved forever. Oh, hallelujah. Our last point is dealing with the results of love. We looked at the source of love and, and talked about it from the standpoint that you, 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 you God is love. And, and he laid down his life and gave us extravagant love by giving us his son, Jesus. And, and now we're looking at the result of love. Listen to verse 13 from the New King James Version of the Bible all the way down to 19. If we, it says, it says, by this, by this. By this, we, we know that we abide in him and he's in us because he has given us his spirit. Everybody, if I was to say spirit, he, when, you, when, you know, he, when you know him, and, and he, he gives us his spirit. He abides in us and he gives us his spirit. And, and that's one of the results of, of, of his love for us. And when we receive his love and accept his love and believe in his son as our Lord and our Savior, he gives us his spirit. And we, 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 we have been. Have seen, it says in verse 14, and testified that 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 Jesus, that means that the Father was sent. The Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. You've got a testimony on the inside. You got Jesus and God abiding in you, and the Holy Spirit abiding in you. That's that's what love is all about. It's in you. It's in you and it's in your heart and it's beating and, and you know it and, and you know that you're known and, and, and then you can't help but tell somebody about the risen Savior. Verse 15. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son God abides in him and, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. So many people have this problem. Well, I don't know if I know God. I don't, I don't know if I got a relationship with God. Have you confessed him as your Lord and Savior? Have you, have you said, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Have you said, I, I know he died for my sins and God raised him from the dead? Have you said, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, Lord Jesus. And then you said, Lord, please forgive me of my sins. Well, what the word here is saying, and if you made that confession, 
Jesus is in you. And you are in Jesus. And we are all in God. We are loved. Now we need to walk in that love. We need to trust that love. We need to embrace that love. Then we need to demonstrate that love. Don't let the devil play any tricks on you about your love for Jesus. You need to just tell the devil and tell the world, I love Jesus. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love me some Jesus. Hallelujah. You should have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation purchased above because I've been washed. Been washed. Been washed in his spirit. Been washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And sing that song. This is my story. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this. That we have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. In other words, when you know that 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 you love by God and that God Love is in you and you love God. You got boldness in the day of judgment because you know that you're covered in the blood of Jesus. I was trying to decide this morning what color shirt to put on. <laughs> God said, you better put on that red shirt representing the blood of Jesus, representing the love of Jesus, because when we think of love, we think of our heart, and we always show our heart as as, as that, that uh, uh, see if I can do that heart thing. I can't even do it half the time. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, our, it's our heart. This is a heart issue, guys. That's, that's all about our love. And his love, more importantly, towards us. So on the day of judgment, you ain't scared of death. You ain't scared of the judgment. You ain't scared of anybody telling you, well, you got this sin and that sin. and this. You didn't do this and you didn't do that. But you can be able to say, but I, I, Jesus loves me. And, that, and I can sing the song, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. <laughs> yes, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Yes, yes, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Oh, hallelujah. And it says in verse 18, There is no fear in love. Because perfect love cast out fear, because fear involves torment. But, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Oh, hallelujah. Stop being scared because you love, y'all. I'm going to read how the New Living Translation reads that 18th verse. Translates it. It says, such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. That shows that we have not fully experienced his full perfect love. 
I'm going to go with the Message Bible and see what it says. The Message Bible says, There is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment is not yet fully formed in love. You got some growing to do. You got some maturing to do. Because God says he loves you. And that's what the Bible says. So you got to grow in love. How do you grow in love? You love others. You love yourself. And most importantly, you love God. If you do that kind of loving, loving God, loving yourself and loving others, you will grow and you'll be set free from fear. And then the final verse, the results of love, having a great relationship with him, having the spirit in you and, 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 and knowing that you know that you know that you're saved with eternal life and, and then knowing that, 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 that God love is there, that you ain't got to worry about the day of judgment, death. You don't have to have any fear because the love in you takes care of all of that. He comes and he says in the 19th verse, he says, we love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. We love him. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it for a minute. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Yes. That's it right there, y'all. That's it. We, 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 we ain't got to figure out if he loves us. He already has demonstrated his love because he first loved us. God loves you. God loves us all. He has demonstrated that love for us. And because he first loved us, we can now love him. Oh, hallelujah. Having the confidence that God loves you is a sign of your love maturing, your love being perfected. There is no doubt that he loves us. He demonstrated his love for us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. On that old rugged cross on that dark Friday night. But he didn't stay dead. He got up out of that grave three days later with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And because he got up, we and now know that we are loved. Perfect love cast out all fear. In this lesson, these are the things I want you to remember. God is the source and author of our love. The great demonstration of God's eternal love has, was sending his son who laid down his life, no greater love than this, to pay the price for our sins. The presence of God's Spirit, his Holy Spirit, provides certainty of our fellowship and our love for him. And then I want you to think about this. There is no better time than now to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Love 
has no fear. So don't be scared to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And don't even be worried if he's going to reject you because he's already showed you his love. Men and women reject our love. Other people reject our love. But God will never reject your love. He will always accept you into the beloved. Let us pray the prayer of salvation. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried. And that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life. To rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. Lord, thank you for loving me. I accept your love into my life and into my heart. Thank you for being my God and my Savior. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer with me right now. And you believe that God's love has now entered into your life. You are now saved. I invite you to go find the local body of believers. And tell them, say, I, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He listened to my prayer, and I'm loved by him. I, I want to join a fellowship of other believers who love Jesus. Hallelujah. The thought to remember for this lesson is that lo let God's love for you be an endless source of your love for others. For those who are on Facebook, we're going to get off this line uh, live, and we're going to go into overtime on the conference call where we'll talk and discuss and even pray for one another on an individual basis. If you want to join us in overtime, the number is 910-218-0531, 910-218-0531. Until next week on Facebook, we'll see you. Come back again, tell your friends that there's a Sunday school lesson live on Facebook that, that is just an awesome lesson for you to listen into live. It'll bless you. And then those that are on, share this on your page so that others might be blessed with this word that God has blessed us with this day. Goodbye, Facebook. May God bless you and keep you in always. Be a blessing.